Seven victories, we're sure to bowl bit, and uh, you know, there's nothing sweeter than this victory. We're playing for the trophy, but more, even more, we were playing for bragging rights in the state of Illinois. Linebacker Pat Fitzgerald, a very happy Northwestern Wildcat after a 17 14 win on Saturday at Illinois that gave the Wildcats a record of 7 1 5 0 in the Big Ten. And welcome, everybody, to the Gary Barnett Show with the head football coach of the Northwestern Wildcats. I'm Dave Bennett. The Wildcats ranked sixth in the nation this week after that win over the Illini, recapturing the Sweet Sue Tomahawk Trophy. And uh, Gary, the number seven is considered a lucky number for a lot of people. I know it was kind of a magic number for you. In a lot of ways, uh, I think the, the seventh win uh, pretty much virtually guarantees a uh, bowl bid for our team, which is is something really that's been in our dreams and our talk for a long time, and uh, now it looks like uh, we're going to reach that goal. Well, Gary, it's been a long time for Northwestern, 1949, and it's been pointed out to me, and you can <laughs> deny this if you choose, that you were two and a half years old. Well, I just recently read in Sports Illustrated where I'm 39, <laughs> so I, I would have to deny uh, what you said. But it means an awful lot to the people at Northwestern. Well, I, f I feel so good for those people who have... Um, follow the program and been with them for so many years and been waiting and waiting and waiting for this to happen and feel very fortunate to be a part of it to, uh, th and they'll be able to now revisit a bowl appearance. Well now this game on Saturday uh, you use the term I believe a chess game. Uh, a chess game in pads. Um, it was we had a lot of work to do on the sideline and our guys had to do a lot of adjustments especially our coaches and then our players had to listen to what those adjustments that, uh, that we had to make were and, and then execute them. And they really did a good job considering uh, weather and uh, the situation. All right, well, we'll come back. We'll take a look at Bobby Fisher working the sidelines here on Saturday in Champaign as we continue on The Gary Barnett Show. Barnett Show. We are at the Nicolette Football Center, which houses the football offices, and uh, this is a very busy place these days, Gary. Very busy, uh, and we have our uh, uh, computer room up here for our athletes to do some of their work with. We also have a lounge here for them, and then our secretary has been uh, madly answering phones for the last several weeks. And your trophy case, and you've got a space <laughs> clear there for the Sweet Sue Tomahawk. Now, you go into Champaign, you've been around this rivalry long enough now to know what's at stake. Well, you throw all your records out, and uh, you just get down and you play football. And it's been hard fought. The four games that I've uh, been involved with, there's probably been uh, at least two upsets. And so um, you, just, you, you just go play football. And it's physical football, and you never know what to expect. And uh, that's the kind of game that, that we had Saturday as well. All right, let's take a look. The Wildcats and the Fighting Illini. Gary, we pick it up with Illinois' first series, third and 12. Well, William Bennett uh, really should have gone for that ball, but he, he played the man instead, and the ball is deflected up, and their receiver plays heads-up ball and catches it and takes it down about the four-yard line now, and, and we do a, a, a really a pretty good stand here. Uh, that, that's uh, Hudefesh Maley, who was one of our champions this week, and Jeff Shine right there, submarine, made a great play, along, uh, as well as Fitz and, uh, and Sharp there. And then they bootlegged in on us on uh, fourth down play, and we really had a Timmy Sharp in position there, but he didn't expect that play, and, and so they get it in. We come right back and 
hit uh, Brian Musso on a big pass. That was a great throw by Steve there. And a little play that we put in for this game. Later in the first quarter, Northwestern in punt formation, and Paul Burton is going to boom one. This is tremendous heads-up play. This is Hudefa, who slaps it back to Chris, who throws it back to Barry Gardner, and Barry stops it on about the one-inch line. But Hudefa actually touched it on the three-yard line, and they get a choice of either taking it first touching or where it's down. So they took it uh, at the three-yard line, and they're going to put together a 97-yard drive here. And uh, that's a nice hit by Chris Martin. That was a, a third down play, and now another third down play for the Illini. Well, this is a little boot pass, and uh, we were supposed to have him covered, but uh, we took our eyes off the receiver, and they were able to pick up the first down. They eventually move it down to the seven-yard line. They'll give it off to uh, Robert Holcomb. Well, this is uh, little things that we hadn't seen. They, they were in a three-back offense. It really caused us some problems early on, and we had to make some adjustments to that. Day. Well, now it's 14 to nothing, about 11 minutes to go in the first half, and you guys come right back. This is another throw to uh, Brian Musso, a nice throw by Steve again. And this is, a, this is a big drive for us. We needed to get this ball down and get ourselves some points. And we finally figured out their defense, and this is uh, Darnell on about an uh, eight-yard, 12-yard run. And, uh, they forced us into doing some things that we hadn't necessarily planned. Uh, Brian comes in. This is a 49-yard field goal. It is with the win, but he boots it and has plenty to spare. And has a big play. Ended up being the difference in the game. And great kick by Brian. You're going to see uh, Sam here on the sideline uh, uh, encouraging Brian and congratulating. That cuts Illinois' lead to 14-3, to and now on third down, we'll see Ty Douthert tap. Well, that's a third down stop, and uh, that was critical that we get that ball back here. And uh, Steve finds uh, uh, Dwayne on a little corner route, and, and we're moving. we have the win now, and we're able to throw. And Darnell again on the outside uh, bounce play and uh, picks up another 16 yards. So that moves it down to the 34-yard line, and here Schnur will go to the air again for Bates. This is a great throw and great catch. What's this catch by Dwayne? And, uh, this, uh, after the uh, extra point, makes it 14 to 10, and we're right back in the game. But it's good, good adjustments by our offensive staff. Late in the half, Illinois driving and the first of the turnover. Uh, Eric Collier finished off uh, both halves with an interception, and uh, uh, key ones uh, they were, too. And that, that's a great play. You see him take a hit after catching that ball. He's an old running back. So, Coach, after trailing 14 nothing, you're back within four points at halftime. Well, we had to do some major adjustments to get that done, uh, Dave. We, uh, Coach Tepper had uh, put in a new defense for us, and they really uh, just ran with Hartle. Everywhere our fullback went, they took their All-American linebacker, Kevin Hardy, and he basically chased the play down. As a result, they knew that a majority of our offense went to where Hartle was. So we had to adjust, put Hartle on one side, and then really run away from him, which reduced the game down to Darren Drexler and Simeon Rice. We'll take a look at the second half highlights in a moment. Hartle goes in motion. Pitch to Autry going wide. Touchdown, Northwestern. So at halftime, the Illini led the Wildcats 14 to 10. And Gary, you made a critical decision at halftime. I went to our defense and I said that uh, I really felt like that we needed to have the ball uh, with the wind in the fourth quarter. And uh, in order for that to happen, we were going to have to give them the ball in the wind in the third quarter. And uh, that meant that our defense was going to have to keep them out of the end zone in the third quarter. And I, I asked them if they felt like our adjustments were adequate enough that, that we could do that. And the defense to a man said they were. So we elected to give them the ball and the win in the third quarter so that we could have it in the fourth quarter. In the end, it ended up uh, making the difference. Turns out your defense backed it up. Let's take a look. Gary, your defense sent them three and out on their first possession of the second half. Their second possession, second turnover. 
Uh, big play by Rodney Ray, one of the three interceptions that we had in that game. And uh, uh, we, they had the win there, and they were trying to get that ball in there. And you, you see a punt. We had trouble punting all day. Ball had bad drops, and uh, this one got deflected a little bit. And if you would have told me we could win this game with Paul Burton only averaging 29 yards a punt, I would have told you a crazy day. That was a 19-yarder, but your defense, under some pressure there, steps up. Well, they did. We had poor field position there for our defense, but Hudefa comes in, and, and Ron Vanderlyn called the right play, and Hudefa made a great play and, and sacked him. This was nearly a, a turnover here, a Schnur scramp. And uh, Brian Carter's very heads up. And, uh, the, again, that's uh, we were going into the win, and they were uh, they had the advantage there, but uh, that was heads-up play by Brian. Late third quarter, Darnell Autry on the way to a 151-yard rushing day. Nice run, a good call by our coaches, and uh, we were sorting some things out there that uh, they had adjusted to in the second half. Now into the fourth quarter, a third down play with Dalton. Well, that's a big stop on the draw play, and uh, uh, you're going to see uh, us come right back here and start our drive down inside. And, uh, that's Darnell on an inside run and, uh, you know, carried the ball 41 times. Now on a second down call, big pass play from Schnur to Bates. Well, we had the win, and we've been waiting to call this uh, until we had the win, and we called it the first chance we could. That was a nice throw, a great uh, big-time catch by Dwayne Bates. That will take you down to the nine-yard line, and Darnell is tackled at the five. We got a face mask penalty on that as well, and that helps us here a little bit. And, uh, now we're going to have four shots at it, and the first one, uh, uh, we had good line surge, but what's the line surge here? We had a great line surge there. We just, we should have found a little crack inside instead of taking that thing outside. Steve tries to go over on a sneak, and he he's as close as you can get. And uh, we call a timeout, make a decision to go with a toss play down here. And you see Darren Drexler on a tremendous block right there on Kevin Hardy, and uh, Matt Hartle as well, and we get it in the end zone, and that gives us the lead. 17-14 with 6-14 to go, a fourth down stop. A big play by Tim Scharf. And, uh, you know, I think at this point our defense thought they weren't going to have to go back on the field, but uh, uh, you're going to see after we miss this field goal here, the wind catches at the last minute, that we still have to play some football, and Illinois is going to storm right back, put themselves in position to win this game. Fourth and six from the Illinois 45-yard line. Well, they... Uh, uh, make a great throw and a great catch by Jason Dulick and uh, now we're in real trouble and uh, the ball's on the, as you can see it on the 17-yard line and there's a sack by Matt Rice and that's a that's a big big play and then we come right back and they get a fumble snap and uh, get a penalty but Hudefa was going to was going to sack him anyway but uh, now we make a controversial decision and decide to back them up and uh, even further but give them two shots at it and they roll out throw it in the end zone and Eric Collier's there and uh, that finishes the game off. Second interception of the day for Collier. The Wildcats win 17 to 14. Well, Coach, what stands out about the final stats? Well, as you can see, uh, David, everything was close. And uh, really, no one had an edge uh, throughout this game. I think the difference in this game, uh, as is in most games, is turnovers. And we had, uh, we were able to convert three turnovers uh, from Illinois. And then at the same time, we had two sacks. And we didn't give up a sack. And when you play a team with uh, a defense like Illinois has and you don't give up a sack, that, that's a critical stat in a game like this. Well, after the victory, the celebration was on in the Northwestern locker room. No, this isn't like the Minnesota game. Uh, we're playing a much better defense uh, here. Uh, this is a heck of a defense. And uh, uh, we gave up a couple of touchdowns that we didn't anticipate giving up. I hope that we, we'd give up, but this was a war down here um, in this setting with uh, them having two weeks to prepare. This is a much more physical game. I knew it was going to be tough. They were going to be pumped up. It's their homecoming. I mean, it's their home field. They, they sold out, so I mean, it was going to be a tough game. We, we prepare for a tough game. It's the biggest game of the year. We're going bowling now. We got the seven victories. We're assured a bowl bid, and uh, you know, there's nothing sweeter than this victory. We're playing for the trophy, but more, even more, we were playing for bragging rights in the state of Illinois. We knew for us to win, it would take a we effort, a whole team effort. Well, I don't know if they, they feel that way. They got a lot of great individuals on that team, but I think what did us, uh, uh, what made us win today, was we have a team, and uh, that's what won a game today. Northwestern's team. So the Wildcats enjoy their victory over the Illini. Now comes Penn State next week. Coming up next, we'll visit with one of the mainstays of the Northwestern secondary, cornerback Chris Martin, as well as place kicker Sam Valenzizzi, as we continue on the Gary Barnett Show.
off the ninth consecutive 100-yard game, man. You're still racking up the yards. Oh, I did it? Yep. Oh, hey, that's great, man. That's great. Eyes for trophy? I hope so. I hope so. All right, man. Well, the key to the Wildcats' success has been the play of the secondary. It's a veteran unit. One of the veterans is cornerback Chris Martin, a senior from Tampa, Florida. Chris with two interceptions, four fumble recoveries this year. That's a Northwestern record. And, Chris, as a unit, this secondary has really been a ball-hawking bunch. Well, I think that we've definitely stepped up. You know, uh, good people make plays when you have to, and that, that, that's what we've been doing as a secondary. Um, uh, the key to our success defensively has been that we've got turnovers. Um, we know that if we get turnovers for our offense, you know, more times they're going to they're gonna convert those turnovers into points, and that, and that points are going to help us win the game. So, you know, we go, we've been looking to go in making plays, whether it's interceptions or, or fumble recovers, whatever we need to to get the ball for offense. You guys play together so well, and you and Rodney and William, of course, have played together for three years. How much does that help? Oh, that's a big part of it, um, that, that experience. You know, we've been in a lot of ball games together. Um, we know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and so to, to play together so long, it's just, it's, it's a good credit to us, and, and you know, to, to be coming out on top now and to be playing well is such a big part, you know. Um, our coach, Jerry Brown, is just the, is the key to the secondary, though. He helps us out so much, and uh, he's worked with us so much and gotten us so prepared. that that's, that's led to our success. Well, as a senior, how much fun is this for you now, knowing you're going to a bowl game? Well, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, we, the, the turnaround, you know, coming from the bottom, you know, essentially to the top is, is the biggest thing. And to do it in my senior years, I mean, it's, it's just a, a fairy book, uh, a storybook uh, ending. Well, we know you're a communication studies major. Uh, we can tell you're into communications, and you're going to be going into what broadcasting once your playing days are over. Hopefully, you know, maybe <laughs> some I'll more be, of this, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll be doing some more of this. Hopefully, um, you know, I'm gonna apply to some grad schools uh, and hopefully take up broadcasting. So um, I'm definitely interested in the field, and maybe I'll be working with you or doing your job. Well, I, I hope so. You're certainly <laughs> well suited for it. Chris Martin, senior cornerback of the Wildcats. Now another senior who's not playing right now for Northwestern, but makes his presence felt, is kicker Sam Valenzizzi, who walked on in this football team and helped in the rise to national prominence. 32. Just tucked that one in as well. So Valenzizzi's got all the Northwestern points. Sam Valenzizzi was one of the most successful kickers in Northwestern history. This season, he currently leads the nation in field goals kicked per game. But then on October 21st against Wisconsin, on a kickoff, he tore his ACL, thus ending his collegiate career. Ball went over Cecil Martin's head. Cecil Martin, one of the returners for Wisconsin, went over his head. And he caught it, started to run forward, and he slipped. It fell down about the two-yard line. When I saw him slip, I just put my hands in the air. Uh, in the same way that you see uh, baseball players, when they hit a home run, they round first, and they put their hands in the air, and they kind of get off the ground a little bit. I maybe got three, four inches off the ground tops. And when it came down, uh, probably the most excruciating pain I've ever felt in my life. I remember one of the guys on the field, one of my teammates, standing over me and saying, who hit you? Who, who did this? But there was nobody around me. There was nobody within 20 yards of me. It's just a real freak thing, and, and it happens. So, you know, if, you know, who knows? I mean... If it hadn't happened then, it might have happened some other time, so. All right, even though that Sam Valencia is now lost for the season, that doesn't mean that he's going to stop helping Northwestern continue this success that they've had so far. He is now working hard on coaching Brian Goins as he is now the number one kicker. Bang! You have to prepare, you know, especially with being a kicker because it's not like you, can, you can't simulate a lot of things in practice. You can't simulate 70,000 people. You can't simulate being out there by yourself. You can't simulate the, the pressure that, that inevitably follows when you walk out on the field during a game. And uh, I've been trying to prepare him, and I think he's ready. I think he and I both didn't expect it to come about like this. You know, he's been trying to help me uh, with the with the things that uh, that you can't really explain the uh, the leadership, what to do when, how to how to hold yourself around the team more than he has with you know actually kicking technique. In addition to his kicking marks that he set as a wildcat, Valen sees he took pride in making tackles on kickoffs, something rarely seen from a kicker. For one, I couldn't see myself running 40 yards downfield without hitting somebody, and second. 
there's 10 other guys on on the field with me and if if I'm not if I'm not going down there and doing the same thing they're doing it's 10 on 11 and you know that's doesn't work like that. You're going to miss that little madman? Oh yeah, especially on kickoff. You know, I think he's got the most tackles out there just because he sticks his nose in there, but he'll be he'll be missed greatly, but I think he's going to help out even more. You know, he's he doesn't mind uh, sounding off, so I think he's got a bigger opportunity to do it now. And Sam made his presence felt on Saturday at Memorial Stadium. Coming up next, we'll take a look ahead to Saturday's game with the Nittany Lions of Penn State next on the Gary Barnett show. Uh, we got two different teams on the field. Uh, we're a better team, and I mean, and then they graduate a lot of people, but they still have they still have a good team. They have a great offensive team, actually. Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show. So, Coach, this battle with Illinois, pretty much what you expected? It really was, uh, Dave. It was. We knew it was going to be hard fought, and uh, Coach Tepper did a great job getting his players ready, and their players played very, very hard, and they're a good football team, and they're going to do very well the rest of this year. And. Uh, we were just fortunate that uh, we got some breaks and played hard, as a little, maybe a little bit harder than they did, and came out with the win. Well, this is an exciting week at Northwestern. Saturday, the defending Rose Bowl champion Nittany Lions of Penn State come into Dyke Stadium, an expected sellout crowd. This is going to be a big day. Dave, this is the most talented team on offense in the Big Ten. Uh, a year ago, I think that the, their defense was just trying to catch up with their offense and probably kept them from winning a national championship. This year, uh, they've got a defense to match their offense. They're extremely talented, uh, and they really caused some problems for our defense getting ready for them. And then our offense is, we're going to have to be a little more wide open than we've been. Uh, but this is, this is a great opportunity to have a home field, a hostile crowd, and playing a defending Rose Bowl champion. It's going to be a big day. Good luck. Thanks, Dave. And that'll do it for this edition of the Gary Barnett Show. For the coach, I'm Dave Ennett. Thanks very much for being with us, everybody. We'll see you next week. Mike's mailing yet? Yes, sir, coach, right here. Is this mine? No, coach, this is Mount Susan's on Get Well Cards. This is mine? That's your mine, coach. <laughs> <laughs>